abstract algebra is supposed to be about doing algebra without as many assumptions, finding the general cases of which the algebra that we grow up doing in middle and high school is a special case. So the question is, how much of the specifics can we forget and it still be something that we recognize as algebra? Right now we're going to define the most central object of study in the first half of abstract algebra, a group. And a group is a setting in which we will hopefully be able to do algebra, but which is general enough to admit a lot of different kinds of examples beyond the algebra and arithmetic that we learned coming up through school. The definition of a group is that it consists, first of all, of a set. It's going to be a set called the set of elements. I think of these as the nouns in the universe that this group defines. And it also has an operation. Think of this as the verb. This is a way of turning two elements from that group into another element from that set. And we also require that that operation be associative, that it satisfy the associative property. We'll talk about that in more detail in a second. So a group gives us a set of nouns and a verb, an operation, that we can use to turn two of those nouns into a third. But not every such structure is going to qualify as a group. If we still want to be able to do algebra, we also need some additional properties to hold. The first being the associative property. The associative property says for this operation, if I operate on three elements, let's call them F, G, and H, then if I group the G and H together, and I operate there first, and then I operate by F in the front, or if I group the F with the G, do that operation, and then operate on H afterwards, that the results of those two operations need to be the same. And so for an associative operation, if I'm operating on three elements, it doesn't matter which of the pairs of those elements out of the three that I do first. And only for associative operations will we be able to be cavalier about where to place parentheses in an expression like this. And when it is an associative operation, we can just leave all the parentheses out with the understanding that if I make a different decision from you about which pair to evaluate first, we're both going to get the same answer. So for an associative operation, we get away with leaving out these parentheses. So associativity is thing one that we need in defining what it means to be a group. Thing two is that we also need for this set, this set of nouns, to be a closed system. If I take any two elements from that set, g and h, and I operate on them, so form the product gh, then the result needs to also be an element of the group. And this needs to hold for all g's and h's that I could pick inside of my universe. So it's like my, my set here sets up a fence, and all the animals in my, in my barn are going to play inside of that fence. Right? There's no way for us, for example, to have some g and some h where the g and the h are inside of our set, but gh, the operation, uh, lands outside of that set. So that's not going to happen for a group. We call this the closure property. And we'll say that our set of elements is closed under the action of this operation. So anytime I form gh for g and h in the group, that product gh needs to reside within the group also. Property number two says that there is an element, call it e, and that element has the property that when I act on any element g on either the left side or the right side by e, the result doesn't change g. So this is an element which, when we operate by it on either side of something, doesn't change that something. So g multiplied by e, if you like, and e multiplied by g, both of those things are the same as g. So e, when it operates, leaves elements in place. We call e an identity element. And it needs to be something that holds every element of this group in place. So for all g, we need to have eg and ge equal to g. And don't be misled by the fact I'm using g here. I could use anything, right? Uh, if I have an element h, he needs to be equal to eh. Right? So we call such an element an identity. And we say that this is the identity property for groups. There's only one more property that we're going to need in order to do the algebra that we want to be able to do with groups. And that property goes as follows. For all elements in my group G, there exists some element H that has the property that GH and HG, those both operations, form the identity. 
So if I pick out a G from my group, then you should be able to furnish me with an H such that G H and H G, so both of those operations going in either order, give me the identity. In a way, we could think of the H as an object that undoes, undoes what G does. So it kind of does the opposite. If I do G and then I do H, I end up at the identity. If I do H first and then I do G, I also end up at the identity. And so we call this element H, we call it an inverse for G. And we say that groups need to have the inverse property. Notice the order of the quantifiers here. For all G, there exists an inverse H. And we'll write it as G to the minus 1. It's not true that the same inverse works for every different element in the group, but every element in the group G has an inverse that it can bring to the party. And it turns out that this is our set. This is the definition. This is all the properties that we're going to need to take for granted in order to define a group, the central object of study in abstract algebra. All we need is a set of nouns, a set of things called the elements of that group. We need an operation, a binary operation, so it takes two of those elements and produces a third. That operation needs to satisfy the associative property. It needs to be closed under that operation, so anytime I take GH, I'm going to land another element inside my group, so I don't get to leave my set of elements. It has the identity property, so there's an element E, which doesn't change anything that it operates on. And it has the inverse property, that every element has a counterpart, which when we operate those two elements together, we end up back at the identity. There's the definition of a group. The next question is, why is this enough to do the kinds of algebra that we want to be able to do? And that's where we're going next.